Hello, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a tutorial on how to make a granny square blanket for beginners. This project is absolutely suited for beginners. It's 33 inches in diameter and it's just a very basic granny square pattern. And the nice thing about this pattern is that the technique I'll show you will make it so that the blanket is reversible and also the technique will make it so that as someone new to crochet, you don't have to worry about the blanket going kind of wonky, which is a common problem with people who are new to crochet and haven't mastered their tension yet. So I'll show you how to make this beautiful blanket. And here's a picture of how it looks uh, folded out full. I can't get it into the camera. So here you go. This is what it looks like. And of course, you can make this blanket any size you like. You can make it smaller or bigger. You can use this color combination. You can do a different color combination. You can switch it up any way you like, but I will show you the basic pattern. And again, it's super easy and very suited for beginners. So let's get started. Now the yarn that I'm using for this project is the Bernat Premium Yarn. It's a number four medium weight yarn. It's 100% acrylic and you can use any yarn that you like for this project. Uh, a number four medium weight would be really nice and you'll need approximately 860 yards or 790 meters depending on how big you make the blanket. So the colors I'm using are the Erin, the Magenta, gold, there's spring green and sky blue. And then I'm using a five millimeter or H8 crochet hook, a darning needle and some scissors. So we'll start with a slip knot. And if you're new to crochet, I do have my beginner crochet series, but I will go very slow for this. So I just put the loop over my index finger, pull that out, bring the loop around my thumb and through the back. There's many different ways to do slip knots. Uh, this is just how I do it. So you put the slip knot on your hook, pull that up, and you'll begin with a chain five. So yarn over and pull that through the loop on your hook. Yarn over, pull that through the loop on your hook. That's a chain two. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through yarn over and pull through and that's five. Now we'll create a ring by doing a slip stitch into the top loop or the back loop of the first chain. So go under that one loop, grab your yarn from behind, pull it through that loop and the loop on your hook. And now you have a ring. So we'll start with a chain two and this counts as your first double crochet and then you'll do a double crochet into the ring so yarn over put your hook into the ring pull the yarn from behind pull that through you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through two loops and that's a double crochet do another double crochet into the ring so yarn over Put the hook into the ring, pull the yarn from behind. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And you can kind of squish those stitches over. And that's your beginning uh, three double crochet cluster. Now chain two. And that will be a future corner. And then we'll do three double crochets into the ring. So yarn over into the ring. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And so you'll carry on doing the double crochets. So that's two double crochets. And then three double crochets. And then chain two. And squish that over again. And we'll do two more clusters. So We'll do three double crochets into the ring. And that's two and three, and then chain two. 
and we'll do one more set of three double crochets into the ring. And that's one and two and three double crochets and chain two. And you'll join this round by going, whoops, I'm a little tangled here. You'll join this round by, you'll skip the beginning chain two and you'll go into the top of the first double crochet above those two chains and you go under both loops of that stitch and this is a little different than a lot of uh, granny square patterns and grab your yarn from behind and slip stitch into that stitch and you've joined that round. Now what we're going to do is we'll turn our work and this is again a little unique way of doing granny squares and then you'll do a slip stitch into the chain two space so put your hook into the space grab your yarn from behind and bring that through and do a slip stitch now you'll chain two and that's your chain two of your beginning cluster and then do two double crochets into the chain two space. And this is how you always do your beginning uh, clusters. And we're working a corner here, so you'll chain two and do another set of three double crochets into the chain two space. And three and then chain one and you'll work a corner into the next chain two space. So three double crochets, two and three, chain two, another set of three double crochets two and three and a chain one and so you'll just repeat that all the way around and I'll see you on the other side. All right so coming to the end of round two I've come out of the corner with my chain one and we'll, ch we'll skip the first chain and the second chain and then go into the top of the first double crochet going under two loops with a slip stitch just like that and now you can fasten off and I like to do a chain one to fasten off some people just fasten off without the chain one it's totally up to you so you just snug that up so that's the end of round two so now you're going to turn your work and for every round you're going to turn your work and we'll join on a new color and you'll create a slip knot again with your new color and this is the magenta and put that on your hook and then you'll always join on with a new color into a corner space into the chain two space and so you'll join on grab your yarn from behind flip your tail over and pull that through the loop on your hook and that's joining on with a slip stitch. So we'll begin with a corner. So chain two and you can work your tail in. You can just tuck it in behind there. And so you'll do two double crochets into that chain two space and that's your beginning cluster. And then chain two and squish that over and do three more double crochets into the chain two space and three and then chain one now we're going to work into the chain one space so do a three double crochet cluster into that chain one space so that's two double crochets and three double crochets 
and then chain one and then you'll work your corner as usual with a set of three double crochets chain two and three double crochets now this is basically the pattern but I'm going to show you how to turn the work and carry on with the same color and how to join on new colors and to keep uh, going, carrying on. So you can fast forward if you feel proficient at this point, or you can just follow along. And so there's my chain one. So you'll just do another set of three double crochets into your chain one space. And two and three and then chain one and you'll just carry on and repeat that all the way around and I'll see you at the end. So coming to the end of round three I've done my last cluster and chain one and you'll join on as before by skipping the beginning chain two and then join into the top of the first double crochet and do a slip stitch and then you'll turn your work and then you'll slip stitch into that chain one space. So whenever you do two rounds of the same color, this is how you'll turn your work. So now you'll chain two and you'll start with a three double crochet cluster. So you're doing two more double crochets with your beginning double crochet cluster and then a chain one. And so doing two rounds in each color. So you'll be going in the other direction and you'll just work another set of three double crochet clusters into the next chain one space. and chain one and then you'll carry on with the same pattern going all the way around working your corners in the same way with your sets of three double crochet close clusters along the straight edge. So we'll see you on the other side. Now coming to the end of round four I've just come out of the corner with my chain one and again you'll skip the first chain and the second chain and then go into the top of the first double crochet uh, and do a slip stitch and then if you want you can do a chain one to fasten off or you can just fasten off like this either way is fine it's totally up to you if you want to do a chain one at the end of that now you can darn in your tail ends as you go and I will show you how to do that and the reason why I like to start in corners is so that you have two clusters of double crochet to darn into so you have a nice amount of fabric. Uh, so now I crocheted the tail end as I was going along so it's already going in one direction and then I would just go back into that those two clusters going in behind, go in one direction, and then I like to sort of pull that out a little bit, and then you can go back in the other direction for a third time, just like that, and pull that off, and just sort of uh, pull that out so it's nice and flat, and snip that off. And there you go. So you can darn in your tail ends as you go, and next we'll join on the cream color. All right, so I've darned in my tail ends and I just left this one to show when you're finishing off away from the corner, you can take this tail and weave it down through here and then work into a corner there. So now we're going to join on the cream color again the Aaron. So you want to turn your work. So you can see here this is your last round facing up and the stitches look sort of straight. That's the last round that you crocheted facing up. You can see where they're kind of curly. That's essentially the back side of the stitch. So you're always wanting to flip the motif for every round. So you'll turn your work and working into the 
the back. It's going to be two-sided because you're flipping all the way around. But essentially you're starting into what would be the back of the motif. You'll create a slip knot, put that on your hook, and then going into your corner, you'll join on as before by doing a slip stitch, pull the yarn through, flip your tail over, and pull that through, and then a chain two for your beginning three double crochet cluster. And you can squish that over and work in your tail in as you go. And two double crochets for that beginning cluster. And two, and then a chain two, and then another set of three double crochet clusters. So now you're just working the granny square stitch all the way around, flipping uh, each side, uh, each round. Um, and so you can skip forward if you like, and, or you can continue to follow along as I show you how to add uh, the new colors. Uh, I'll just be adding the green after this and then you can uh, carry on from that. So, so carry on around and I will see you on the other side and we'll fasten off this color and join on the green. Okay, so coming to the end of round five, we'll join as before, you skip the beginning two chains and going into the stitch just above that the top of the first double crochet with a slip stitch and then a chain one to fasten off or just fasten off however you like and snug that up. Now if you wanted you could do two rounds of the cream and two rounds of the solid colors. I'm just doing one round in between so again that's totally up to you. So uh, now we're going to join on the green. So turn your work. Always make sure to turn your work after each round. And now I'm joining on the spring green. So again, creating a slip knot. Put that on your hook. And go into the chain two space in the corner and join with a slip stitch. And pull that through and a chain two and push that over and then carry on with your corner cluster as before and your three double crochet clusters in each of the chain one spaces as before and I'll see you at the end. All right so coming to the end of this round you'll skip the beginning two chains and go into the top of that first double crochet with a slip stitch as before. And now carrying on with the same color, you'll turn your work and slip stitch into that chain one space and do your, oopsie, and chain two and carry on repeating this pattern as before, working your way all the way around, and I will see you on the other side. Now coming to the end of this round with a spring green, I'm just coming out of the corner, and again joining as before, skipping the beginning two chains, and going into the top of that double crochet first double crochet with a slip stitch and fasten off. Again you don't have to do the chain one that's a personal thing. So that's the end of those two rounds. So then you'll just carry on you'll turn your work and then you'll do another round of the Aran color in just one round and then turn your round work and then do two rounds of the gold turning for each round do another round of the Aran fasten off and then two rounds of the sky blue and then you'll have completed all the colors and I'll show you how mine's looking at that time now you might wonder why we're turning the motif with each round and the reason for that is especially if you're new to crochet when you're crocheting in rounds 
the motif has a tendency to, to sort of pull in the direction that you're crocheting because of tension. And if your tension is a bit tight or if it pulls in one direction, the granny square blanket can become warped and wonky. So by turning for each round, you're doing tension in one direction and then in the other direction. And you're keeping the motif really nice and even in its tension. So carry on and I'll come back and show you once I've done all the colors and then we'll carry on from there. So I've completed one sequence of all the colors and I will repeat that once again. Um, and I've already started with the cream and the magenta. Welcome back. Now I'm at round 27 and I'm wanting to finish with the magenta because I think that color looks really nice. So I have the last round in the granny square pattern in this color before I go to the final border. So whatever color you want to finish, uh, do one last round of the granny square stitch pattern and then we'll do the final border. Now for the border, we're going to join the round as before, skipping the chain two and into the top of the double crochet from the previous row with a slip stitch. You're not going to turn your work this time. You're just going to chain two and carry on in the same direction, doing a double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then you're right into the corner here. And so you'll do five double crochets into the corner to get around the corner. Now, if you wanted, you could do a round of single crochet or a round of half double crochets, but I think the double crochet stitch is a nice scale compared to the stitches that we've been doing for this entire pattern. So it creates a really nice balance. So there's five. And now when you come around the corner, you want your, you have your chain one space, count back three stitches, and that's the stitch you want to go into coming out of your corner. So into the top of that first double crochet of your three double crochet cluster. And then just double crochet into the top of the double crochets of and into the top two loops of each stitch all the way around. Then when you get to your chain one space, if you want, you can work into the chain one space or you can work into the stitch. I like to work into the stitch. So just yarn over and pick up those two loops. It's a little tight to work into, but I like the look of that. And then you can just do the double crochet like that. And then you'll just carry on doing your double crochets all the way around into the top of each stitch. And you know, this is a super simple border to do, but I think it just looks very classy. So see how nice that looks? So carry on, work your way all the way around, doing your sets of five double crochets to get around each corner, and I'll see you at this end here. All right, so here we are coming to the end, and I've just done a double, double crochet into the chain one, and there's actually just one more stitch to do here. So you'll yarn over, and it's right after that chain one. There's a bit of a gap there, and you want to do one more double crochet into that very last stitch. Now if you like you can skip the chain two and join into the top of that double crochet as we've been doing all the way along and do a slip stitch and fasten off your final round. And you can do that but I like to finish the last round with an invisible stitch. So to do that you just take the yarn off your hook. I'd already cut my tail and you put that onto a darning needle and then you skip those two chains and going in from the back of that double crochet stitch picking up those two top loops you come in from behind and you pull the yarn through there and you just sort of fuss with that a little bit and even it out and you come back into the stitch that you came out of there's that V stitch there. You go in between the V stitch and then you also pick up this back bump at the back of your work there. 
and you're making like a mock stitch, an invisible stitch, and it makes a really nice finish. And then all you do is you darn in your tail end. I like to crisscross over to that beginning chain just to sort of secure those two stitches together. And then just go ahead and darn in that tail end and darn in all your other tail ends. And then I'll come back for the vinyl reveal. Okay, so here we are all done. And of course I can't get the whole thing into the camera, but I'll just insert a picture here so you can see how it looks when it's uh, all open and done. So it does finish at 33 inches with a total of 28 rounds. So of course you can make this any size you like. You can use any color combination you like and you can change up the border if you like. And you know, a granny square blanket has so many possibilities. And then what I do is, this is an acrylic ma material, it's machine washable. I always wash in cold water and lay flat to dry. And for this, I just use the hand steamer to steam the outside edge. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. We'll see you next time.